Hello, everybody, and welcome to this uh, afternoon's webinar, Unleashing the Power of Atlassian Cloud, brought to you by the Executive Leaders Network and Nomad Moo. My name is Peter Dorrington, and I'm delighted to be your moderator for this afternoon. So I'm going to start with a little bit of housekeeping before we get into the first of our poll questions and we introduce our speakers. So then, first of all, this is a webinar. You don't need to worry about your camera or your microphone being live, um, but we do want to hear from you. So please do share any comments, observations or questions in chat. I'll be keeping an eye on that all the way through our webinar. And we will answer all of your questions, even if we can't do it in the live presentation portion. So please do as I say, share your comments, questions or observations in chat. Um, also, can I ask that um, you bear in mind that we're recording today's webinar, so don't feel that you have to take lots of notes. We will send you instructions on how you can watch it on demand uh, shortly after the webinar ends. So let's start off with the first of our poll questions. And the question is this. So you'll find it, by the way, under the polls tab on your interface. And it is, are you currently using any Atlassian product like Confluence or Jira, Bitbucket, Bandu or other in the server mode? So answers obviously are yes, no, don't know. I prefer not to answer. So whilst you answer that, we'll leave the poll running for a few minutes. What I'd like to do now is introduce our three expert speakers for today. Now, I'm actually going to ask them to introduce themselves. So we're going to bring them on stage as we do. So firstly, let me go to Eduardo. So Eduardo left the screen in front of us. Would you mind just briefly introducing yourself, please? Hello. Good morning or good afternoon. My name is Eduardo Yado. I am the commercial director for Nomad Mood for North America. Lovely. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to ask Emily. Emily, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself, please. Of course. Hi, uh, my name is Emily Sorrell and I'm a senior solutions engineer at Atlassian. Perfect. Finally, last but by no means least, Jacques, would you mind introducing yourself, please? Of course, Peter. Um, my name is Jacques Schoofs. I work for Nomad Mood for more than seven years and I'm a senior certified Atlassian consultant. Lovely. Thank you. Now, as you can see from this slide, there are three main sections to our presentation today. We're going to start start with talking a little bit about the value proposition, what it is we are and what we do. Then we'll talk about the product and the roadmap, and then we'll get some insights and best practices for smooth migration. So why don't we start with the first of those sections, the value proposition. And Eduardo, let me go to you first. Thank you, Peter. Nomad Mood is a consulting IT services and software development company founded in 1994. We reached $138 million last year in revenue a 32% increase over 2021. We have global presence in seven countries with 22 offices. The US handles the United States and Canada. We have more than 2,400 employees with more than 500 customers worldwide and encompassing 23 technology communities. Nomad Mood has several ISO certifications as well as CMMI Dev slash three certification. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Nomad Move provides cross collaboration knowledge and exchange between our 23 communities. What does this mean to our customers? It provides our customers with a greater bandwidth of collaboration with the Atlassian world. We have depth and, and strong teams, as you see by the numbers of professional and experts in each of our communities and expert centers. Next slide, please. Nomad Mood has strong alliances with a wide range of premier partners, Atlassian being one of our strongest partners. Next slide, please. Nomad Mood is a platinum partner. We are cloud and ITSM certified. Nomad Mood is, is certified professionals in Confluence Administrator, Agile Development with GR Software, GR Surface Management, Atlassian System Administrator, and we have several Atlassian certified experts. A few of the sectors that we work in are institution of higher education, insurance, telco, banking and financial services, 
hospitality, health sciences, and public sector. We have been a trusted Atlassian partner for over 11 years with over 200 professionals, more than 300 customers, and we've conducted more than 3,000 best practice services. Our largest managed instance has 25,000 users. We have extensive experience in more than 460 marketplace apps. And we have the following in-house solutions, Agile ITSM, Easy DevOps, Smart Work Management, Lean Enterprise Agility. And with, with this, I'll pass it on to my presenters, Emily and Jax. Thank you, Peter. No, thank you, Ed Ardo. So what I'd like to do now is hand over to Emily to tell us a little bit about the product on the roadmap. And we'll have another poll at the end of Emily's section. But Emily, over to you. Thank you, Peter. Um, so yeah, so I'm here to present to you the Atlassian platform, the latest great feature we launched and what is coming soon. So what is Atlassian's platform? We help you build a connected enterprise by empowering your teams to work differently together. But what, that, what does that entail? Well, it breaks down information silos with cross-product experience and flexible integration on a secure and reliable cloud platform, encouraging collaboration by connecting and aligning teams. It also enables data-driven decision with the help of the new data lake and analytic tool. Next slide, please. So what's coming next on the platform? Well, first and foremost, Atlassian Intelligent is already out in beta, and I will cover the key features in the following slide. Data Lake export is coming by the end of this year. It will allow you to export Atlassian data to your preferred BI tool. Now, for our always evolving automation tool, new triggers and action will be added to both Confluence and Jira by Q2 of 2024. On the administration side of things, custom domain will be out in Q4 2023, already in beta for some customers. API token control also coming out by the end of Q4 will expand administrator controls, improving security and auditing. Another big one, data residency in Canada will also be out by the end of this year. It will enable Canadian companies in regulated industry like finance, government and healthcare to store their data on Canadian ground. At the moment, Canadian cloud customer data resides mainly in the US. Next slide. Thank you. So already in beta, Atlassian Intelligent combines state-of-the-art models developed by OpenAI with the power and data inside the Atlassian platform. In short, we provide a native artificial intelligence experience contextual to you, your team, and your workflows, all in a way that respects the privacy of your data. Now let's look at the feature. For Alice Bitbucket, Confluence, and Jira, you have AI editing. An example of this would be that in Confluence, your team can use it to generate new content or edit the tone of their writing, summarize the main points of a longer document, or ask questions about where to find a piece of information. The next one is mainly directed for Jira service management, and we call it Summarize. So instead of reading through long description and numerous comments on a Jira service management ticket, you can use Atlassian Intelligence to summarize this information for you quickly. Answer is available for Confluence. So instead of using filters or advanced search syntax, it allows you to ask a question and get an answer based on the information available to you. Similar to answers um, to the answer feature, natural language search allows you to use, well, as the name state, natural language rather than the Jira query language, JQL in short, when searching for tickets in Jira. And finally, Jira service management, virtual agent automates tier one support requests freeing agent time to focus on the work that matters and enabling 24 seven self-service support. It is easy to set up with out of the box knowledge base sensor and pre-built templates, which of course can be customized to your liking. Next slide. Atlassian Analytics offers simple and flexible ways to visual data across Atlassian products and other data source, giving you holistic insight into how works get done across teams and ultimately allowing, as I said earlier, to make data-driven decisions. You can source data from Confluence, Jira Product Discovery, Service Management, Jira Software and Work Management, as well as Ops Genie. You can use it in DevOps to understand how your development cycle delivers value to your customer or in service management to monitor and alleviate service blocker impacting time to value for your customers. It's useful also for business team to analyze how they create and manage content across Confluence sites. And so many more options are available there. Some of the key features include out-of-the-box templates for service management, asset management, 
content management and DevOps use case. Custom data analysis with a powerful visual no-code SQL interface and multiple options for visualizing your data from tables to pie chart, bar chart, and more. Next slide. So analytics sources its data from the Atlassian data lake, but you can also use the database connectors to enable you to query non-Atlassian data sources, including Snowflake, Amazon Redshift, Google BigQuery, Microsoft SQL Server, Postgres SQL, and more. As mentioned earlier, the ability to export the Atlassian data lake to your BI database will be available soon. Next slide. Now let's dig uh, into what is already out and what is coming up on the core product, starting with Jira. We recently shipped a bunch of new features, especially in the agile and DevOps space, such as progress tracking for the release sub and progressive delivery. And of course, a lot more is coming up. The following slides will cover the highlights. Next slide. So let's go over what is already available. Jira Doc Discovery just got out of its beta phase and is officially available to user. Filling a gap in Jira, it is a dedicated tool for product teams to capture and prioritize ideas and bring business and tech team together by connecting product ideas to the delivery work happening in Jira software. It makes it easy for product manager to capture the why behind the work by continuously communicating communicating to and engaging with stakeholders using features like customizable views and roadmap. Next slide, <clears throat> sorry. Um, so we've brought some great feature in the last few months to improve productivity and ease of use. Dark, dark mode was asked for so long and finally we delivered um, to the joy of our users. There's also the new updated card layout that allows a quick overview of each issues without opening it. The issues uh, for attention insights surface stuck issues, issues that are blocked by their dependencies and flagged issues. This makes it easier to address high priority work within your current sprint or on your board. And of course, we are continuously improving the UX of advanced roadmap to allow better visual visualization of the report, especially for the dependency report, adding new ways of slicing and dicing, filtering option, and the ability to create new dependency directly within the report view. Next slide. Thank you, Peter. Um, Jira now offers the possibility to integrate with GitHub Enterprise, allowing teams to have everything they need to develop and operate software right out of the box, accessing more of the tool your developers love. The new security feature helps your team identify, prioritize, and triage security vulnerabilities in Jira software identified by your security tools. Once your tool is connected, you're able to assess each vulnerability based on factors like severity or how complex the fix is, link it to an issue, add the issue to your sprint or backlog, and track it until it's resolved. The release hub now offers more insight into the true progress of a release thanks to the unified progress bar and developer information, including pull request, deployment, and feature flag status. By enhancing the integration of tools, you get an open tool chain that feels all in one reducing context switching, and ultimately increase, increasing the productivity and efficiency of your teams. Next slide. For the feature coming soon, you'll hear that we are mainly focusing on efficiency and performance. Board and backlog enhancement will bring seamless ease of use with direct issue editing, faster load time, and smoother interaction. We are also updating the advanced issue search with a consistent UX for finding issues within individual projects, but also across all instances. This new experience will be faster and more user-friendly, introducing features such as inline editing and an improved JQL editor. Next slide. So now what are we cooking in Confluence? As we are doing in JIRA, we are focusing on efficiency and performance by enhancing a bunch of existing features, starting with a faster editor and page loading. By the end of 2023, more Confluence data will be supported in analytics, and we will be updating the JIRA integration to improve reliability and user experience when showing a list of JIRA issues. In early 2024, a cloud to cloud migration tool will be out to allow you to copy product data between Confluence sites. Also, a newly scaled page management tool will enable administrator to manage a content in bulk, removing the tedious manual task of updating page one by one when necessary. So next slide. So uh, we've launched recently Whiteboard and Beta. It is a collaborative way for teams to turn ideas into action where you can have everything in one place to see the whole picture of your work. 
it has all the fundamental whiteboards feature like shape, voting, timers, and more. However, our deeper integration within the Atlassian platform, such as converting stickies into JIRA issues or Confluence pages, will help you build, build sorry, a real single source of truth with fewer tools. This is it for me. Of course, there's a lot more coming um, to, to all our other product. I focus mainly on our core product, JIRA and Confluence, uh, but you feel free to visit our Atlassian roadmap page for more information. Thank you. Lovely, thank you very much, Emily. Um, we're gonna have a poll in a moment, but before we do, I just want to reflect on a couple of things you said and the observant amongst you may have been noticing I was busily writing notes. So Emily, <laughs> let me just get a, a, a couple of thoughts that I like. First of which, I like the practical implementation of AI here. I think that there were the two main ones that I picked up. Firstly, that it can help with the content creation and generation part of the AI. But I think an important thing is the way that it summarizes what's going on, which makes things more digestible and consumable, I guess, for our users. The second point that I also picked up on this is that this, for me, is speaking a lot to a concern that many organizations have at the moment where they're trying to do more with less, less time, less people, less money, less risk. And it struck me that this looks like a way that it reflects the way that we already work. So it's not actually us having to bend ourselves into, well, we have to work the Atlassian way. It actually is Atlassian works the way we work. I just want to get your thoughts on that. Was that a deliberate um, out from the outset that you wanted to design it that way? Or was that simply me reading into it more than perhaps? Really? <laughs> well, of course, it, it will offer more than that. It, it, it learns on the fly, of course. So a, a good example of that is while you write maybe a project poster in Confluence and you want to um, you want to refer back to it in Jira, just by writing the keyword, it will show you the pages that refers to that project directly so you can add it quickly. So the idea is really to bring efficiency here. Um, the virtual agent also will do that. Um, allowing really the, the support agent to focus on the work that matter and also make sure that the level one support that often takes away time from support ag agent on more significant work um, be solved easily by that virtual agent. So yes, it is to help how you, we work today, but also to improve the efficiency and productivity. Perfect. Thanks very much. So it offers sure. you the best of the future whilst actually capturing the best of what already exists. Yeah. Now then, time for our second poll question. By the way, we've collated the results. I will share those at the end of our um, webinar today. So poll question number two, which you will find in the same place as the first one. Look under the poll tabs and it's now live. And the question is this. If you are still on server, are you considering to changing to the cloud, data center and other platform? not decided yet or prefer not to answer. So like all multiple choice questions, choose the one that's closest to your particular situation. We know none of them are a perfect fit, um, but um, whilst you do that, what I'd like to do now is invite our third expert to share with us some of the insights about, you know, that clearly this just doesn't happen. It's part of a process. So, uh, Jack, what I'd like you to do is, if you wouldn't mind, share with us some of the insights about how we can ensure a smooth migration to Atlassian Cloud. OK, <clears throat> thank you, Peter. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, and I also want to thank Emily for the overview that she's given about the Atlassian Cloud platform. It's really spectacular what Atlassian has been achieving in the last couple of years in cloud. I don't know if people know what was there like three or four years ago, but comparing what they had four years ago and what they have now, it's really amazing what they've been able to do <clears throat> in this, in development terms, pretty short time. Uh, next slide, please, Peter. Um, so as we've seen from, from the poll, and I'm going to do a bit of a spoiler here, 93% of, or 63% of you guys that are joining this webinar are still on server, so you still have to decide what you are going to do. So if you're currently using server, you've probably noticed that you've received Atlassian messages in the last couple of years, where they've mentioned that the server platform is out by February 2024. It doesn't mean that you can no longer use it, but there's no longer any support for it. So we really make, recommend that you uh, make a decision as soon as possible. Next slide, please. So um, we've heard from Emily what the cloud platform is on a large scale, but we need to get down to the details. Um, why should I choose Atlassian Cloud? Next slide, please. 
So as a company, you're obviously going to wager the pros and cons about this SaaS solution. The great advantage is that you no longer have to worry about the infrastructure, the maintenance, and you're always being on the latest version that is released by Atlassian. That is the advantage of a SaaS solution. Also, the integration with other tools is, is much easier than it is when you have to do it on your own. Also, licensing, as you can see on the slide, has a little bit more flexible model where you can choose either by going monthly uh, licensing or yearly licensing. Um, next slide, please. It's important for any uh, product that you select, either on-premise or in, in cloud. Um, Atlassian has done its work. You have, central, you have a centralized admin center where you can manage all the products, the users, the groups, and all the other settings that come related with uh, it building, um, security, and so on. There's also a strong focus from Atlassian on protecting your data. They're compliant with more than 20 certification, and this list is growing on and on and on. You can find this on their website, atlassian.com slash trust. And of course, you don't want the service to fail. So the entire infrastructure is, is built on AWS with a multi-tenant microservice architecture. Next slide, please. Also very important when you select any of these SaaS solutions is where is my data going? Especially if you have an on-premise uh, version, you're usually very protective of the data that you have. So you want to make sure that the data that you are going to put in the SaaS solution, where is it going to be? Atlassian provides for specific products the ability to select the region where the data is hosted. Currently, this is done for Confluence, Jira, software, Jira service management, and Jira work management. Um, and you can con configure this, self, this for yourself in uh, the administration of the Atlassian tools. On the screen, you will see the different locations that are currently available. And as Emily mentioned before, Canale is in the pipeline. Next slide, please. One difference from the on-prem versions to the cloud version is that the way how marketplace apps store their data. In the server version, this is all hosted in your own database. You have it all on your own, you, you control everything. In cloud, however, each app vendor has their own infrastructure where they save your data. Um, and on the marketplace, you will see a tab on each of these products that, that, that exist there, where you can check how the data is uh, handled by the vendor and um, if they comply with security or not. Next slide, please. So this is getting a landscape of what cloud is. And now that what we need to do is go into the details and see what a migration looks like. Next slide, please. <clears throat> From a bird's eye view, you will see that these are the main steps. You assess what you have, you plan what you migrate, you plan, prepare the cloud instance, you test, migrate, and you launch. But let's go into more detail. Next slide. So first in the assessment phase, what you need to decide is cloud a valid option for me. Think about any customizations that you have or integrations with third party tools uh, that might be behind firewalls, security, compliance, feature ana analysis, what you gain, what you lose. Then obviously you need to decide which Atlassian products you're going to use and compare their versions. Important here is to validate that your Atlassian landscape, what versions you are currently using and how you can move this to cloud because versions are important. Also marketplace as I, apps, as I said before, are you still using them? Because very often you have a list of apps that you've installed, but some of them you no longer use or you'll scarcely use and you wanna do an analysis on this. Also user management, you wanna do a user cleanup. I've seen companies that have 30 to 50,000 users in their user directory. Are they really necessary to be there? Will they actually access the Atlassian platform when you migrate this to cloud? Size and complexity. Migrating Jira, so you can understand that migrating only Jira software is much simpler than migrating a tool set where you have Jira software, Jira service management, Bitbucket, Bamboo, and all the other Atlassian tools that exist out there on premise. So your complexity is very important to take into account also. 
And when you assess this, you obviously want to get your team together. You thinking about project managers, system administrators, executive sponsors, because obviously somebody needs to um, be there to, to enforce this, this migration. Uh, you need your tech team, you need the testers, you need uh, security people, you need the legal and uh, other teams. Next slide, please. So once that is done, once you've done the assessment, you go into the planning phase where you would uh, set up your cloud instance. And here, when you migrate from an on-premise version to cloud, Atlassian has a special promotion where you can use a cloud migration trial. Um, or you can purchase a completely new cloud site from, from scratch. Obviously, I suggest that you go with the uh, migration trial offer that Atlassian has. Then you also need to decide if you want to use Atlassian Access. Atlassian Access is the tool that allows you to connect your Atlassian platform, your the cloud platform, to your on-premise IDPs, Microsoft Azure, uh, and others that are out there. Other step that you need to do is verify that your domain, because obviously you cannot connect to your uh, um, IDP if you have, haven't proved to Atlassian that you are actually the owner of that domain. Um, you also want to select the migration strategy. Also, here are four important uh, strategies that exist there. You have the optimize and shift, the lift and shift, the phased and the start fresh. Optimize and shift basically is, let's first, before we start the migration, do the analysis of what we currently have and see what we can remove and what we can optimize, and then do the migration. Lift and shift is basically saying, I have everything that I have, and I'll just migrate everything as is to cloud. And then the phased migration would be if you have a situation where you have different applications that cannot be migrated all at the same time, you might want to go first with the first application, then the second one, and then the third one. This is a little bit more complex uh, of a migration because obviously when you migrate one of the applications in the entire development cycle, you need to make sure that once it's migrated, that the other tools that you still have on premise keep connecting to your migrated uh, application. So this is very, uh, it's a bit more complicated, but it's certainly a possibility. And then another thing that you can do, and this depends obviously about your uh, current situation, is decide, okay, I'll just create a new cloud instance and I'll keep my on-prem version as it is. And as from now, I'll just start with um, everything new in cloud. Next slide, please. So once you've done that, you need to prepare. You need to prepare your team. You need to prepare the site. So you need to create the site that you've done in the previous step, but you need to set it up. You need to uh, obtain the apps, the, the marketplace apps that you still want to maintain. Uh, you want to check your ver server versions. We always recommend that you are on the latest LTS version. Um, you want to create a pre-migration checklist. There's a couple of out there that Atlassian provides on their website. <clears throat> and we as a vendor obviously will also help you in creating these checklists and <clears throat> do that in accordance with you. Also important is creating your run books, because as you know, when you do a migration, you need everything to be um, identified and quickly uh, to work and not having to think each, every st single step at, at the same time. Um, here, you would also include the timeline. When are we going to do the test migration? When are we going to do the final migration? What are the pros and cons of the, the phased migration, for instance, and all these kind of things is what you do in this particular phase. Next slide, please. Then <clears throat> comes the test migration. Um, first of all, before you do anything, you need to back up your data. In any migration, there, there is bound to be some data transformation, like, as I said, version upgrades or data loss. loss. If you have decided that a certain application you no longer want to use, you might lose specific data from that application. You need to create a QA and test environment to test your migration, because obviously you won't create your testing uh, on the server product, uh, on the production server. Then you need to create your user accepting testing, which is a key in the migration, uh, because this will decide whether your migration, either your test migration or your production migration, is a fail or is a go. Then, obviously, you need to create training materials. You will think, okay, but my people already know how to use the application in server. 
Yes, you are right, they do. But as Emily has said, and I've mentioned, is that cloud is rapidly uh, uh, changing this rapid, that there are a lot of changes in the interface, in the way things work, in new features that are available. So you do want your users, once they get to the cloud, you want them to be able to quickly uh, uh, catch up and be able to know where everything is located. Communicate your plan. Once you have uh, your plan set <clears throat> for your migration, obviously you need to let the entire company know because most of these migrations affect a lot of people in their daily work. So you need to plan in advance, talk to them and let them know when this migration is going to happen. Also let them know if they find some error or if they have a problem, where should they go uh, with their uh, questions. Next slide, please. Then, once you've done all the um, testing in advance, you're ready to go and migrate the final uh, solution, your production environment. So what you would do here is at the day of your migration, you will set your server instance in a read-only mode to make sure that nobody enters and changes data while you're migrating. Um, then you run the production migrate, migration, obviously, if you have your runbook, if you have your procedures, if you have your Q&A, et cetera, et cetera, then this should be very easy to execute. Obviously, so something always might happen, but it's usually pretty quick uh, when you do this. Then, very important st step, which I call the go, no go meeting, is QA your migrated data. You would have done this in the test migrations, but in the production migration, it is even more important to test this. <clears throat> make sure that the data is there, make sure that the functionalities are there, which you have decided on to migrate, um, have your QA uh, people do the testing. And one of the things that I always say to my clients is, um, you are responsible for your, your QA. I can't create your QA because you know best how your procedure works, how your uh, workflow works, what are the pros and cons, what are the blockers, etc. So this is something that you um, um, that you need to work with. And obviously we will help you in creating these Q&A uh, items. And then once the migration is done, then the Q&A is, is it's done, you have your go, no-go meeting. This for me is a crucial meeting that you have, that we have with the team. And when I say team, I mean the, the consultant, if we help you, and also uh, you as a company with all the members of your team, uh, we, have a Q, we have a go, no go meeting. This is the meeting where we decide, has the migration been a success or has it failed? If it's failed, obviously we'll have to reschedule, redo everything. If it's a success, there might still be issues that are, that are not completely migrated, but you will have to decide, is it really, a reason to stop the migration or is this something that we can um, solve after the migration has finished? Um, next slide, please. So then once you've decided in the no, go, no go meeting that your migration has finished, obviously you need to communicate this to the team. Make sure that everyone is aware of the changed environment, update your server instances and add a message of the new URL so that people who access the environment will be able to access the new URL. Also, what I include is a hypercare because we all know if we change tools, something is usually changed also in the way that we do regular stuff. And in this hypercare period, um, we have a specific service where we are on call as uh, quickly as you want where we help people uh, finding their way around the new tools and the way of working stuff. What you also need to do is obviously transition your support and maintenance teams because you no longer have an infrastructure to maintain, uh, but you will uh, be able to help have this team help you in deciding the new directions in, in your Atlassian uh, cloud environment. Also implement the cloud security best practices um, obviously, the on-prem security best practices is different because you control the entire environment in cloud. You have a little bit more insight into what Atlassian provides to you. Atlassian, again, as I said, has some best practices on this 
how to do this, but you also want to work with your own team uh, on seeing the best solutions. And then, as I mentioned in, in one of the previous slides, follow the cloud updates, because, is, because this is a SaaS solution, you will um, see that there are new updates that are released every so often. Uh, they're pretty, pretty frequent. If you're on a uh, premium or a higher plan, what you can do as a organization admin, what you can do is decide which, with which frequency you want to release these uh, features. Uh, you can decide it on a monthly basis. And that's it for me at this moment. Peter, we don't hear you. I think you're on mute. Yeah, I am. Look at that. Rookie mistake. <laughs> so, thanks very much, Jacques. We're going to have our third and final poll in just a moment. And I'm going to come back to Jacques just for some final thoughts about where you can find out something else. But before I do, I'm going to do what I did with Emily. So, Jacques, as you were talking, you know, clearly there's a really a compelling reason to change to the cloud, but it isn't simply replicating what you can get on the server. If I'm reading what you're saying right, it sounds like you're embracing some of the cloud-only features that are you know, available in so many other domains. And I'd really like to say which for you struck you as being some of the most important. The other thing is that I know that there's a couple of schools of thought about do we do our housekeeping before we migrate, or do we migrate and do our housekeeping afterwards once we've got a handle on what's going on? And I'd love to know your thoughts about how well Atlassian supports that latter one, that if you do do a lift and shift and then decide you do want to make some changes, what kind of things you've got in place to help that? So the first of which is, what for you are some of the best cloud-only features you've now able to um, offer and your thoughts about um, what if we do lift and shift and then want to go back and make some changes? Mm. So uh, one of the one of the main important things that I think in, in, in the cloud only version is for Jira service management. Um, Jira service management is by far, I think, the most evolved product with comparison to its data center or its server version. Um, in the cloud, you have a specific way of uh, managing incidents, managing problems. Uh, you can also integrate, it also integrates by default with Obsgeni, which is a tool that allows uh, you to manage incoming alerts from your monitoring systems and raise uh, uh, incidents in case you have the, your rule set, um, incidents in Jira service management. This is not something that is available in server, uh, and I doubt that Atlassian will develop this. Um, but this is one of the features that I think is very important in cloud. Also, the interface and the integration with other tools is a little bit more easier when, uh, when you are in cloud. Now, with regards to your next question is, what happens if I do a lift and shift? Um, you will have the same mess as you had on your server. Um, some of these instances have been existing for over I don't know how many years. I have some customers where I started out setting up their Jira instance in 2012. So that's 11 years of data and apps and stuff that is there, which probably most of it is no longer used. So you might think we'll do a lift and shift and that might be easier in the long run, but it really isn't because at a certain point, you will always go through your old uh, information. Even when you look at your photos, or your own personal photos, you will say, okay, this was fine, but I no longer need it. So the same happens with, with, with these kind of tools. Atlassian has no problem that you take everything and move it to cloud, but you will be there with the same problems that you had in server. Um, workflows that didn't work, um, data that is not correct, um, you pay too much, many licenses because you have five different apps for the same functionality. So instead of doing this in cloud, once you've migrated, you're better off doing this in the big app before you start migrating. Great. Thank you very much, Jack. And as I say, there are some people who say, well, 
Yeah, I don't want to get in there and do my house cleaning first, but I think it's best practice, as indeed you just said, and not the least of which, it'll probably save you a lot of complexity and cost in the long run. Right, now, two things. First of all, some of you have identified you can ask questions in chat, and I encourage you to do so. We're going to try and answer a couple of those if we can before the end of our webinar. And the question to Matt that says, will this webinar be available as a recording afterwards? Yes, it will. You will be able to watch it on demand. I'll tell you about how you can access that at the end. And also our presenters today very kindly said that they will um, release their slides for you. So we will also include that in the follow-up mechanisms. But let's go on to the poll. This is our third and final poll. As I said, I will read the results out um, at the end as we um, go through uh, the Q&A. So then, if you're thinking about migration, and bearing in mind you do have that compelling event coming up in February, would you um, try to do everything yourself? Would you look to get help from a partner? Have you not decided yet? Or would you prefer not to answer? So as before, choose the answer which is closest to the way that you think at the moment. There are no wrong answers to this, by the way, and your opinion is every bit as valuable and valid as anybody else's. Now, whilst you do that, um, I'm just going to come back to Jacques for a moment to talk about some of the additional resources that we have available to you. We've only got a couple more slides, and then we'll get into some of that Q&A. So, Jacques, back to you about um, where do we go if we need some help? And I'll dance to the next slide for you. I think Ellie's going to answer this for me. Sorry, that would be Ellie then. <laughs> well, if you need some help, um, one of the best ways is to go and, and contact us here in the US, contact me. We have a team out of, out of which Jax is one of our team leaders. And then we'll go ahead and respond and see how we can be best of service. And you might want to skip to the next slide also, because that is also interesting. Well, that's something that, uh, thank you, Peter, that's something that we're offering our, our guests today that joined us, and we appreciate your time. So we're offering a bank of hours, eight hours, from our professional services team. And it could be assessments, it could be some kind of small project um, that we'll provide free of charge. The, uh, the, this promotion, this offer is valid until November 1st, so you don't have to decide now, but please keep in mind that it will be our team. It will be professional service side. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. And uh, sorry about the confusion about who was going to be speaking there. That's entirely right. down to me being an old person. <laughs> I'm going to leave this up because I want to give people plenty of time to get their phones out and to scan that QR code. After all, it's not every day you're offered eight hours of professional services time to help you in these early thoughts. And I can tell you from personal experience, it pays to engage with a partner early because they can help you get an idea about what your requirements should be, what the project plan will be in your particular circumstances. So it's a great investment in time. So I would definitely take them up on this offer. Anywho, I'd like to remind you, uh, we're going to have some Q&A in a moment. But before we do, what I'd like you to do um, is, uh, if you haven't already, then go ahead and vote. But we're going to talk about a couple of points, and I'm going to come back to the poll results. So, Jack, let me just come back to you for um, a couple of questions. Now, the first of which I know is a piece of string kind of question, but how long does it normally or typically take for a migration from server to cloud? So what would be a, a reasonable expectation of the time frame to make the migration from server to cloud? Mm. So on average, most of the migrations take about uh, from three months until nine months. Uh, but it very much depends on the tools that you wish to migrate, obviously. The amount of data that you need to migrate, the usage of marketplace apps, because we need to check whether or not they are also available in cloud. Uh, and also the knowledge and the experience that one has in executing these migration obviously has a lot of uh, impact. Um, we, as our company, we have had a lot of um, experience with these migrations because we, I'm not going to say that we do 20,000 a year, but we have done quite a lot uh, and we keep them doing until the end of, of, of February, very certainly. So um, between three to nine months is the regular time span. And sometimes it can be more depending on the complexity. I did say it was a piece of string kind of question, so I do appreciate that's the case. As I say, this is why it's important to engage with a partner earlier. Set expectations, because a lot of that will be 
very contextual to your organization, but also your priorities and where you need to start and what you need delivered and by when. Now, Emily, let me come to you for the next one. So um, we've talked a lot about the cloud, but obviously people are still, as we heard, I think it was 63% saying that they are on server. So do all the Atlassian on-premise applications have their counterpart in the cloud? So not all on-prem application will exist on the cloud as they are now, while others do have a data center version. Um, an example for that, uh, Bamboo, uh, exist on data center, however, it doesn't exist on the cloud. If um, a customer wants to use Bamboo on data center, however, it's possible to link it to Jira Cloud using what we call application link. Um, for Bamboo, uh, if the customer decides to have a 100% cloud footprint, uh, it would be a feature in Bitbucket that we call Bitbucket Pipelines that kind of replace Bamboo. That's an example for Bamboo. Another example for that is Crowd. So Crowd is used on server for user management. Uh, it has been replaced by an all other product on, on the cloud that is called Access. Ultimately, it has all the same feature, it's just built with newest technology and uh, integrates with more uh, user authentication. So it really depends on the app that you are using. Um, again, as I said, some will have a data version, a data center version. Others have uh, a, a new, it's either a new, um, a new feature on the cloud or a new product. And some may be deprecated simply because the, 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 the technology is not there anymore. Lovely. Thank you very much, Emily. I don't know whether Eduardo or Jacques, you want to add anything to that from your experience about those things that are currently in the server or um, data center version, but not available on cloud. No, very often you will see um, <clears throat> specific sectors and specific companies that uh, for whatever reason they have, do not want to migrate to cloud and they will switch over to data center um, because they, they feel more comfortable with it and they more or less have the same functionality from server in data center. And just as a side note, we also help people with uh, data center uh, migrations from server to data center, if that is of anyone's interest. Yeah, thank you. I'm sure it will be because I, don't, I do know that um, we're in second or third wave of people in cloud at the moment. And in case you get the raised eyebrow, I think for many people in that first wave, one of the shocks was they they felt that it wasn't quite as predictable as they thought. Now, I'm not saying that's the case here, of course, because it's a completely different context. But they, some people do like that comfort of think they've got some control over a data center. Anyway, I did say I was going to share the results, and I will do, and then we'll come back for another couple of these points. Meanwhile, if you have a question, please do drop it into the chat um, or the Q&A. We'll come back to that in a moment. So poll one. Um, and we've already reflected on this a little bit, which was that are you currently using any Atlassian product in the server mode? The answer was 63.6% um, of you. So just under two thirds of you said, yes, you are. 9% um, said, no, you're not. And 27% uh, of you said you didn't know. So you know, still quite a lot of people using Atlassian products in the server mode. The second poll was if you're still on server, are you changing to one of the following? So cloud. 36% of you are considering changing to the cloud. 18% um, of you are considering that data center option. 9% of you are thinking about another platform. But over a third of you, 36% of you, haven't decided yet, which I suspect is a lot about why you're um, watching this webinar right now. And our last poll, which is if you're thinking about migration, would you do everything yourself? 14% of you said you would. Get help from a partner. 57% of you said you would look for help work from a partner to do that. 28% of you haven't um, decided yet. And nobody answered, preferred not to answer. So it looks like we've actually got at least three times as many people saying they would like to get help from a partner than saying they're going to try and do it themselves. But a healthy proportion are still in that decision making cycle. Now, Adi, I'm going to come to you, actually, and I'm just going to say, do any of these results look surprising to you with all the conversations you have with partners in your region? No, it actually doesn't. You're, they're, they're looking at the dreadful over the cliff for those customers. So it's a big decision they have to make. Uh, they have to look at their resources. Do they have the bandwidth? Do they have the technical know-how? Uh, if they do, that's great. Do they have the time to do that? So now that pretty much falls in line. We're seeing a lot more, though, that are 
pulling the trigger at this moment, correct? Because time is, is, is running out uh, on that. Yeah, February will be on us before we know it. So I think, um, and you know, th this is not some little thing that we're talking about here. This is for many organizations actually central to a lot of their operations. So I can understand that. And as I said, my personal view, I love engaging with partners who've got skin in the game that actually are there to help make the migration to support that. And we heard about the hypercare from Jack about, you know, making sure that even once the transition is done, that you've still got that deep support to uh, iron out any wrinkles that may appear after the fact. Anyway, um, let's go to something else we're going to talk about in a second. I'll, I'll remind everybody again, you can ask a question directly. Just drop it into chat and we'll bring it in. So, Jacques, let me come back to you again. Um, as I said, this is a uh, what I would typify as being something which is straightforward but not trivial to do. So what are some of the common challenges with a migration to cloud? And Emily, I'll come to you after Jacques had a chance to thought. So, but Jacques, let me come to you first then. Some of the common challenges that we might face when we're making the migration. Mm -hmm. So yeah, <clears throat> one of the first errors that we see very often is that thinking what you have isn't very complex. This is especially true, as I mentioned before, for instances that have been up and running for a very, very long time. And when talking to our customers about the migration, we very often find that specific configurations or integration with other systems have been there so long that everybody forgot about them and that they're still important to maintain. So you need to figure out what these integrations are, how they work, how they were set up. So you need to reproduce them in, in the cloud. Another frequent error that we have is not taking enough time to set the ex expectance criteria or the ex acceptance criteria, better said, for the migration. This includes the UIT tests done during the process, because again, as I mentioned and I stressed during this webinar, um, it is important to work together and to make absolutely sure that you know what the breaking point is for a succession, sex, successful migration or a failed migration. Um, and these UIT tests seem very simple and very uh, commonplace, but they're not because they are the decision maker in whether your migration has been successful or not. Um, also, um, make sure that um, you know that cloud is not the same as your on-prem version, as I've also mentioned a couple of times, and, and Emily also has mentioned. Um, the interface is different. Some of the ways of working is different. Uh, I have a lot of clients, for instance, that uh, once they're on cloud, they think the user management that they do is only for JIRA or only for Confluence, which is not the case at all, because the user management and the group management is a layer on top of all the Atl Atlassian applications. So these are the common uh, challenges and, and issues that we see when doing a migration. Lovely. Thank you, Jack. Emily, let me ask you the same question then, but from your point of view, what are some of the common challenges or hiccups? I, I think what I, I would really like to know is, when do we think it's going to go left, but it turns right? <laughs> so I'm not making a value judgment on that, but clearly every implementation on the planet has always had a surprise or two in store. Yeah, so um, one thing is never underestimate. Migration pro projects are always big projects, so don't uh, underestimate the effort that is taken. And at last, and then partners are there to help the customer um, uh, with that for sure. And another big one I would say is the users. So anyone that went through change management will know the most difficult part is often the people, right? So um, migration can be disruptive. Jacques just went over um, cloud is very different. They may need to change how they work a little bit. So communication plan is really important and the migration plan is really important too. So it's really important to have all of those in place to mitigate the, the risk of an happy user. And ultimately your user are gonna use the platform. So you have to make sure that they're happy with it and, and, and they're a big part of it. So use them throughout your migration, UAT testing as, as Jacques said, communicate a lot and it will be way smoother. So yeah, I would say that that would be my, uh, my added uh, comment to that. 
Great, thanks very much, Emily. And yep, and I think I'm going to have to agree. It is always more complex than you think. It always takes a little bit longer than you plan. Um, but as I said, this is something which um, Nomad Mood and Atlassian have really got a handle on. So I, as I say, would typify it as being straightforward, but not trivial. So it's not a small project, but once you've done a few of them, you can pretty much work out what there may be ahead. That's also, again, to say another reason why I always strongly recommend working with a partner if you can, because they have seen so many versions of this. They know all the things that you didn't think to ask or didn't think to specify. Now, just one final point. I'm just going to come back again, Emily. Um, I know we've partially answered this before, so I just want to double check. You haven't got anything else you'd like to add to that. And it's this. If there are any of those server apps that don't appear to be available in the cloud or not, at least not yet, are there any other specific things we should bear in mind about that or that would help us to solve that? So I want to make the, the shift to the cloud, <laughs> but I've got some residual apps that I don't think are available in the um, cloud. What can I do about that? So this is this is quite a large question. So there's multiple ways to go about. So it it really depends on that, on what the app is used for. In some cases, there will be a cloud equivalent that may not be coming from the exact same vendor, but has similar features. Uh, in this case, it would require redoing the configs in the cloud, but it may be sufficient to address the need. Uh, in, other, in other cases, the feature may now be native to cloud. An example for that is automation for Jira that is available uh, on server and uh, data center as a plugin. It is now native to cloud. And I did mention it earlier. We add triggers, action as we go. Uh, our R&D, of course, is all about the cloud. So you get always the latest and greatest with this tool. And we've done that with multiple apps. Uh, another example of that is the forms. So being able to create uh, custom forms, uh, we did, it was an app and we did build it in um, the, the, the cloud. Um, and some apps, this case is rare, but it may happen, may simply have never been rewritten to fit on the cloud. And if it, that is the case, chances are that this app is a legacy from years and years of using the on-prem instance. And, and Jacques just did cover that a bit earlier. It may be a good opportunity to review if the application is really still relevant to how Jira and Confluent is used by the users now. Um, I, I am also uh, agreeing that Cleaning up the instance first before moving is great. A little bit as if you move a you move you you move from another to another house, you'll clean up your 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 stuff before moving. It's the same idea with the apps. Um, we've seen I, I've seen server application that had multiple admins throughout the years, and they would buy an app saying, "Hey, I need that," and they let go of this app as they go, and and the, the next admin may not know about it. So it's it's a good occasion to to get into that and look into it and, and clean that up. So we have to see that as an opportunity and not necessarily as a, a, a blocker there. Now, opportunity it is indeed. As a pack rat myself, I know <laughs> how hard it can be to give up some of those things that, yeah. oh, that looks useful. I'll hold on to it just in case. <laughs> so, you know, and business processes tend to have a habit of accumulating extra steps and gates over time. And we never seem to get around to taking them out once the useful one is gone. Anyway, we're coming to the end. So I've just got a couple of things I need to do. First of which is to say um, that what's going to happen next? So we're going to um, immediately send you an email uh, almost immediately after the end of this webinar telling you how you can watch it on demand. So you can go back and catch up on some of those points. Perhaps you didn't get a chance to fully absorb. So um, look out for that. We'll also have Nomad Mood will reach out to each of you to give you an opportunity to carry on this conversation um, on a one to one level. And don't forget that QR code. You have an opportunity here to take advantage of the time bank. So definitely take advantage of that. Um, although they would hate me to say so, I'm going to. Anyway, I look at this as an opportunity to get some free consulting from some of the best brains in the business. So ask the experts. Use that as an opportunity, as I say, to engage early. If you are one of those that are undecided yet or you think you're going to need some help, perfect opportunity to do that. So definitely look out for that. And with that, all that really remains is to do the thanks. So firstly, I want to thank our three experts today. Great content, folks. So thank you, Eddie, Emily, and Jacques. I really enjoyed this. I did take loads of notes. Um, and you'll probably be hearing from me shortly after this as well. <laughs> 
I also want to thank uh, Nomad Mood and Atlassian for their support and sponsorship of this webinar. It wouldn't have happened without them, as indeed it wouldn't without the help of Elise and all the team at the Executive Leaders Network who work tirelessly in the background and on the logistics. I know you've all heard from them um, in the run up to this. So thank you to them as well. But last but not least, um, I want to say thank you to all of you for your attention, for all of your thoughts and comments. Um, and I hope, like me, you found this useful, that you've learned something new, but you're going to take advantage of this opportunity to continue your learning. And until the next time, take care now and goodbye. Cheerio. Bye bye.